Uh, just the headline of this week, we, you hear Debo Samuel's comments on your play. What do you think? How do you respond? Uh, it's a big game for us this week, you know, playing a great team. And uh, it's going to be a big challenge for us, and I can't wait to go out there and play. Is there any extra motivation at all when you hear things like that or even think of last year? No, nah, because last year's last year. Um, I think the extra motivation just comes from it being a division opponent. You know, they're in the NFC. I'm not bad, a conference opponent. You know, because they're in the NFC with us, and uh, they're a great team. Uh, so it's going to be a big challenge for us. When you hear him say something like that <laughs> and then double down on it, what, what is the key to staying focused and not letting that affect you in, in any way? Uh, I just approach one day at a time. You know, of course, I don't really necessarily like what he said. I wish you to use the better word, you know, to describe my play. Uh, but it is what it is. And at the end of the day, all I can do is control my work eth ethic, you know, uh, what I do day to day. James, why do you think he said that? What was your motivation? Uh, you'd have to ask him. Um, you know, from the clips that I saw, you know, of course they, they felt like they had a good game plan against us. Um, they felt like they had some open routes against us. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess this, you got to ask him. You know. Has there ever been a point in your career where something like that would bother you? You know what? I mean, I've been playing football since I was eight. I'm 30 now, so I've been playing roughly uh, 22 years of my life. Uh, so, I mean, I've had people say negative things about me in the past, you know, when I was coming out of high school, people said I couldn't do it. Uh, when I was in college, you know, I was transferring, people said I couldn't play corner because I was at safety originally. And coming into the league, you know, people said I couldn't do certain things. Um, I got drafted in the second round. It's my eighth year in the league. So really negative comments don't really bother me like that. I try not to let it get to me. Um, I just try to control my work ethic and um, line it up on Sunday and let, let, let whatever cards I have, I'm going to play them and let the, uh, the product speak for itself. We're hearing so many players, teammates, talk about how you guys have not played a complete game yet. Coach Sirianni talks about it all the time. What does a complete game look like to you? Hmm. I mean, obviously, a complete game, you would probably be a perfect game for us, uh, but that's hard to ask for in the NFL. And a complete game would be the offense playing really well, the defense playing really well, and special teams playing well. Uh, but like I said, the NFL doesn't always work like that, uh, but that's what you aim for. Do you feel like you're close? Uh, I think we're getting close. You know, we're just a few plays here and there um, that we're giving away from, like, reaching our, our, our mark and goal every week. Uh, we just got to continue to correct the mistakes and make sure we're locked in every play. In the 10-1 and one record, yet this team is the underdogs in this game. Do you even care? Do you look at that? Does it bother anyone, you think? No, I don't really look at the media stuff for the most part. I try to avoid it, you know. It's only brought to my attention, you know, when outside people bring it to my attention or when I see it across, like, my timeline or whatever. Uh, so I try not to pay attention to it. James, along those lines, uh, sort of being the underdog, um, you guys have beaten the Chiefs and the Bills. Uh, mm -hmm. Is this an opportunity with the Niners for you guys to make a statement, maybe not even to the rest of the league, but to yourself? I mean, I think every week, you know, now that we're in the, at the back end of the season, you know, you want to be playing the best football. Um, we're playing a lot of good teams on the back end. Um, so it'll definitely be a, a morale boost if we come out here and get a win at home, uh, playing a conference opponent, uh, playing a great team at that. Uh, so it'll definitely help us out. Hargrave, uh, what, what, what's the thought of playing seeing uh, Graves again? You know what? Um, we, be, we talk all the time, so it's going to be cool to uh, see Hargrave, um, you know, I know he's going to uh, talk his stuff just like just as much as we going to have fun out there. But I know that, um, you know, this week is, is you know, it's, it's like every other week. We got to make sure we uh, go in with, with our plan and, and make sure we carry it out. But it is going to be good to see him in person. And Coach Sirianni talked about this is a new team and obviously this is a rivalry. But do you go back to last season at all? And now you have a player calling one of your teammates trash. Does it bring extra motivation at all? Well, you know what? I think it's just more about making sure that we don't get all, get all into it. Uh, we know that it's there, but we got to make sure that we, we come ready to play on Sunday. And so uh, we know that they, 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 um, they, they play hard. We play hard. And so it's going to be one of those games where – don't let the emotions get the best of you and make sure we execute because, you know, the beginning of the game is always be emotional. It's going to be, um, you know, high on both sides. But the, the team that carries out the plan is usually the one who wins. So I know for us, we're just going to go out there and just carry out our plan and uh, do the best uh, that we can uh, for, to win that game. How do, how do you react when they, they're talking like they are? Like ever since the game pretty much ended last year, you know, saying they, we only had 10 guys and stuff like that. Uh, I think you react in a way with just, you know, like I say, knowing that it's there, but 
we got to execute and making sure that we uh, don't get caught up in all that because it takes away from us remembering what we got to do. And uh, that's, I mean, because I know for me sometimes I might get carried away with talking stuff to other teams and like, oh, what's the play? You know, and you don't want to, you don't want to be in them positions because that might be the play that they might need, that we might need to, to help us, you know, win the game. But um, I know for me, um, we gonna, I'm gonna be me. I'm gonna have fun with it. But um, I know for us as a whole, we gotta make sure that we execute and go out there um, and, and play how we play. I know over the years, there's been many times before after big wins, you come off the field and. And call people out for picking against you or doubting you guys. You what guys, are new people that's in here right now? Well, uh, I see a couple. You guys are, <laughs> even though you're ten to one in yeah. your home, you're underdogs. How do you feel about that? You know what? I don't feel no way, cause uh, I'd rather it be that way anyway. Because we ain't done nothing yet. We ain't even put together a whole whole game together. But I know what we do have and and what we need to get better. And so I know for this week. We gonna make sure we keep getting better uh, at at the stuff that we not as good at or not as um, polished on, uh, and, and stay sharp on the ones we are. So I know for us, we ten and one. It's not. It's not. That don't mean anything uh, because we don't hold that ring. And so we just got to make sure we getting better as the season go. I love uh, how we fight. I mean that's one thing we got going for ourselves. Uh, but we got to make sure that we we stay together and stay stay with the mindset of execution because uh, that's really how you how you win win these games is you know who who can execute the longest. And you say you haven't played a complete game yet, and so many players are telling us that. Mm -hmm. What does a complete game look like to you? And I'm sure it's different for every player. Well, I think it's more about uh, how many, because we look at the mental errors for the game and, and the mistakes or missed tackles and um, all, all three phases, special teams, um, offense, defense. And so um, I, I know that we, uh, we know that we got a good team and something special, but we, not even, we haven't even scratched the surface of a, of a perfect game. And it ain't never a perfect game, but you know how we all play well on all three phases. And so I'm ready for that to uh, come together uh, even more. And one thing I do know, we got each other's back. Um, if, if offense struggling and defense, definitely got to go out there and get a spark. Or if defense struggling offense, go out there and get a spark for us. Or special teams, you know, it's, it's – I mean, you you can't take any plays off. It's it's about the quality of play, other than the quantity of how many reps we play. Uh, so every time I'm out there, um, you know, now that I'm playing, you know, less, I make sure it's quality reps from myself because my team is depending on me to for me to go out and do my job just as much as I'm depending on them. BJ, I know you, I, I know you guys never uh, wish injury on anyone, but the pass rush was so effective in the NFC Championship game that you not uh, two of your quarterbacks to the effect that there there was a rule change you know over the offseason for that third quarterback rule i guess just uh what was your uh, reaction when they had that uh, nfl change now that um, you know you guys can shoot up three quarterbacks now because of that game well um when stuff like that happens in the game where you know you got two quarterbacks down um, you do want to have a, somebody to be able to go in and so to have three i mean that's great for all all teams i mean the odds of it happening all the time i mean it's, it's, it's not as, as high, but, I mean, now it's cool to have an extra guy up, uh, especially at quarterback. Hopefully you don't need him other than just do, doing the signals and stuff like that or keeping or, or telling the quarterback um, QB1 on um, what, what they see and what they don't see, what they like, what they don't like. Uh, but I'm, I think it helps everybody. BG, you, guys just, you, know, you beat the Chiefs and the Bills, um, but in, along the lines of the underdog stuff and, and the, the, the maybe disrespect a little bit, is this an opportunity for you guys to make a statement, maybe not even to the rest of the league, but even to yourself? I mean, we, we know what we know about ourselves. And if we don't beat ourselves, I mean, we put ourselves in a good position to win every game. But um, the, the, ga the, the game is staying healthy. Making sure you believing in the, um, believing in the process, believing in the in the cause, and just going out there and, and letting your personality show by how you play. And so um, I can't worry about you know the underdog stuff. That's just part of it. Um, nobody, even when we when we want it all, people still didn't want to give it to us. And it's all good because we it's always about us. And so I know. We, we in this thing for the long haul. We're trying to make it to the end to get that ring. And so 
uh, the 49ers is, is the next opponent up, and we got to make sure we're ready for them. Brandon, you, you've had some really tough games. This is a really tough stretch. The Niners are coming here, I think, with 10 days off. So you guys played overtime. Mm -hmm. Did Nick do anything a little different, maybe to get you guys off the feet mentally, physically, trying to get you ready for this game? You know what? I trust that Nick got a process for us. I mean, today, obviously, is our walkthrough Wednesday. Um, this, this is another day to get your body back. We've been already had Monday and Tuesday. Seen a lot of guys in the weight room just trying to make sure that they stay stay oiled up. That's how you that's how you look at it uh, and make sure that um, they're ready for the Thursday practice because Thursday is really the big one. But they cut they cut back reps um, on the Thursday uh, based off how we do on Wednesday. And so I think today if we come in right and come in ready, uh, focus mentally and you know make uh, minimum uh, mental errors today. I think we. I think we'll put ourselves in a good position uh, for Coach to cut us back a little bit. But um, it's on us. It's always on us. So I, I love it either way because uh, you're just showing the young guys how it's done on emotional games and emotional wins on how you can t how they can take care of them, uh, take care of us. But we got to make sure we take care of them too. Right. When, you, uh, when, it comes to, uh, when it comes to Purdy, what's kind of like – I mean, he obviously gets the ball out pretty quickly, and he's got four really good receivers to throw to and everything. Like, what do, what do you guys have to do to kind of keep him under wraps? Just keep coming. Keep coming. Stop the run. You know, number one, uh, that's every week. But, um, you know, everything is revolved around that running game. And um, they do boots. They do a lot of different things. Uh, they motion a lot. They try to... You know, get you get you with your with their eyes. I mean, with your eyes. And so, we just got to make sure that we um, that we focused on. You know, just just not. We just got to make sure that we're not thinking out there and just playing. Because at the end of the day, um, Purdy and them they do all the 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 gadget stuff, and uh, we just got to make sure we we we, we penetrating it and, and getting after him. Because uh, with any quarterback, when you put a little pressure on them, you know, things get a little different. So. I mean, that's our quarterback included. So we just got to make sure uh, we disrupt him uh, back there and not allow him to, um, you know, just sit back and just be able to pick us apart. Brandon, listening to you, Mike Dobbins, the Bills were already calling game. You're saying because it was your faith in Jalen, like, what is, where does, where does that stem from? Uh, just, just the message that we talk to each other all the time. I mean, we talk about believe. And so believe is, you know, all lip service, but. I try to make sure I, I speak life into the guys, and uh, and actually mean that by by what I what I show and what I what I do. You know what I'm saying every day, uh, and I'm always trying to you know motivate the guys and speak life into them. And so in the moments, I believe I'm I'm just you know trying to walk the walk with it. You know, and that's in those moments, I believe that Jalen's gonna go down and do something special. I don't know what it's gonna be because I don't know all the play calls, but. I know that we all trust in each other and trust in Jalen to get it done and run that offense like it's supposed to and uh, defense get off the field. And that's our part of, you know, helping him and, and contributing to, you know, the success of, you know, the team because everything, you know, he gets the ball all the time. So he's the one that got to distribute, uh, pass out uh, the ball uh, everywhere. So, you know. If, if your team believe in you, it, it gives you a comp confidence, I feel. He already got confidence, but it's, it's even more uh, when, when you know we behind you 100%, win, lose, or draw. Deshaun Jackson retiring as an Eagle on Friday. What did he mean to this team? Uh, you know, I, I love D-Jack. D-Jack was, you know, he, he wears emotions on his sleeve, you know, and I know he was going to come, come with it every week. And I'm happy to be able to be a part of, uh, you know, his retirement, uh, seeing him retire as an Eagle. Um, and I know that, um, you know, it's going to be emotional for him because, I mean, when you, when you call it and you hang the cleats up, uh, I'm, I mean, I already know that he's on to the next thing, but it's definitely going to bring some emotions back in. I'm sure he's going to want to play, especially how electric it's going to be on Sunday. What do you have cooked up for Eagle? Huh? What do you have cooked up for D, though? I guess you got to watch out and find out. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm sure <laughs> they're trying to cook up something for them. <laughs> Thank you. Well, in your short time here, do you view this week, this game, as the biggest competition yet for the Eagles? Biggest competition? Been a I mean, tough schedule. <laughs> yeah, I about to say, I mean, we faced some really good teams, even since I've been here. Um, but I would definitely say that 49ers is one of the best teams in the NFL. That's clear. Uh, what they can do on offense, how their defense plays as well. Um, it's going to be, you know, at least up until this point since I've been here, it's probably be our biggest test. Um, obviously, I know the history behind, you know, the NFC Championship game last year and stuff like that. Uh, but this, it, it'll be a bloodbath for sure. Um, 
expect a very physical uh, matchup where obviously we want to run the ball, they want to run the ball. So whoever team is going to be the most physical and eliminate those big explosive players is going to be the team that win the game. And one team talking a lot and the other team, this team, really not saying much. James Bradbury just responded to Samuel's comments saying he's focused on this game. Is that the correct approach in your mind? Yeah, I mean, I just feel like trash talking is going to win the game. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think that anybody should really – uh, get too much into it because at the end of the day, um, you got to go out there and play football. You know, and I don't think that the team is going to go out there. The team that trash talks the most is going to team that wins the game. It's really going to be about who executes uh, the, the the keys to victory. And like I said, I think it's going to be stopping the run on both sides, uh, or whoever team stops the run, uh, limits those explosive plays. Um, it's going to be a team that wins this game. So uh, we have to focus on what we need to do, you know, as a team, uh, which is, you know, executing our game plan and things like that. And then we'll let the chips fall where they may. And the Eagles have been saying this all season, but especially the past couple of weeks since you've been here about wanting to play a complete game, that they haven't played a perfect game yet. Do you agree in your eyes? Do you see that need to play a complete game right now? Yeah, absolutely. We haven't uh, played our best ball. I mean, that's clear. But... We've been able to find ways to win, and that's the most important thing, uh, just winning. Uh, so obviously we want to go out there and play a complete game this Sunday, but the most important thing is winning. You know what I mean? Like, uh, it's very hard to win in this league. Uh, to be 10-1 and one is not something that's, that's easy to do at all. And um, But like you said, I mean, I would, I would think we'll be foolish to think that, you know, we'll continue to win ball games, going to halftime, being under 10. Obviously, it's great that we've been able to do it. We face that adversity, and we've overcome it. But at the end, they want to be able to play a more complete game, for sure. What did you make from watching from afar of last year's NFC title game when they lost both of their quarterbacks and then everything ensued after that? What did you make of that whole situation and the way everything played out? I, I might have been in Miami or something like that watching. That was with my <laughs> wife, actually. But, I mean, just being real, I mean, it would be hard for any team to win a – a game when you're down to your third quarter. I think McCaffrey was playing quarterback or something like that. It'd be hard for any team to at least try to come back and win a ball game. Now in this league, like, you know, you got to go out and try to win a game. I mean, I'm not saying that that was an excuse or a crutch or anything like that, but it's tough for anybody. But um, but like I said, I wasn't on this team then. You know, I don't really know what the whole talk, you know, I, obviously I didn't really watch the true film. It was in the playoffs. But, um, but, yeah, I would say it would be any tough for any team to try to win with their third quarterback being down. So we'll see what happens on Sunday. On a completely different note, you guys played a lot of snaps last week. How, how, how's your body feeling a few days after that game going into another big game, a game in which they have more rest in terms of days than you guys? How are you guys feeling? I mean, my body feels sore any Wednesday, honestly. I don't think it's like I feel even more sore because I played 92 snaps. You know, I prepare my body. Uh, throughout the offseason and be able to, you know, play as many snaps as I've always played my entire career. Um, so, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's a, us, our job as pros to make the hard look easy. It doesn't really matter how much rest we had or not. You know, guys go from playing on Sunday to go play on Thursday. You know, there's, n there's no excuse. There's going to be no storyline behind, oh, we didn't have any rest and they had extra rest. You know, this is pro football. we got to go out there and do our jobs. Well, in the midst <laughs> of the incredibly tough <clears throat> schedule, do you see this week as your biggest challenge yet? Um, that's a tough question. I think this is the way you, know, you, <laughs> you want me to say yes. It's the next game. Um, we have a lot of respect for this defensive front, this defensive scheme, and this team. And so, you know, it, it, we'd be stupid if we if we said you know, no. But we know what they have up front. But we also know what we have up front here too, and and our game plan, the guys that we have on this team. And so, that's all we're going to focus on. Just focus on our game. That's it. And I know you've been asked this a ton, and everyone is talking about all the talking that's been going on mm -hmm. between last year and now. One of your teammates calling your player a trash player. Does that bother you? Do you even think about it? Do you even give it any attention? I mean, I'd be lying if I if I said uh, you know hearing that kind of you know irks me a little but again you got to be able to be selfless you got to be able to put that stuff aside and focus on the team goal the the game plan this week you can't let any uh personal i guess i can't really say that because now i'd be a hypocrite because i made the kansas city game a little bit personal but you know again uh, you got to be able to just put your best foot forward this week focus on the game plan execute your role that's what you know coach said we got to we got to focus on our role this week and execute it to the best of our ability what is chase young added to their defense Chase Young, uh, I mean, he's a formidable player. And you, you'd be a fool if you underestimated him. And, um, you know, one time I underestimated him, I gave up a sack. And so I, my plan this week is to not do that.
Yeah. <laughs> and the next time we played him, I didn't do that. So I didn't give up a sack. You know, so that's a that's a formidable player right there. He's a hell of a rusher, and I uh, just got to be able to, to stick to my technique and uh, and execute my role. What about playing against their defensive line in general? I mean, Hargraves there, mm -hmm. they got a pretty deep. Grave digger. Kind of like, kind of like <laughs> you guys do and everything. Yeah, I'd be lying if I said um, I was kind of heartbroken when Grave Digger signed with them. I was like, damn. And then when we saw we had them, I was like, ah, oh, we get to see him now. Uh, that, I mean, that's a hell of a defensive front and a hell of an addition for them. And so, you know, again, we've got to treat them with the respect that they deserve. Uh, but again, you know, we could talk about, you know, go out there and earn it. We, we both have to earn it, both O line and D line. And so we've got to go out there and play our ball. Jordan, you're a protective, you're a protective guy by nature. So when you hear. Members of their team say things mm -hmm. that weren't very flattering of your teammates. Yeah. How do you carry? It? Yeah, it, it irks me. I, I, I'd be lying if I said you know it, it irks me. But you know, we have to learn to to kind of put that uh, put that aside. Uh, it's probably my biggest takeaway from the KC game was just you know I had to learn how to uh, let last year go um, and, and focus on the game plan and execute. It. So you know, we, we'll see what happens this week. You know, we'll see. Um, have a lot of trust and faith in the, the guys in this locker room, and we've got to go out there and, and focus on our game plan and execute.